Okay, so it's my honor and my privilege to introduce our dear friend Linus, Linus Kuhl, who is the founder and the creative director of Send Max and Media. Send Max's mission is really about bringing life giving stories to people, communities, and the world, and really to inspire our hearts to meet Jesus, to experience the love of God, especially in this new generation of. Um, storytellers and you know people like us who watch so much of the media especially in the post-COVID world so without further ado Linus love for you to introduce yourself we're here to hear your stories I'm very excited to welcome you this morning welcome Linus thank you Audrey for the introduction uh, my name is Linus and I'm 34 this year uh, I'm a parishioner from OLPS uh, and I'm married to a very special wife her beautiful name is Anne-Marie and as you can see here uh, she lives a glorious life. We have four kids together, uh, Lillian, Levi, Leah Grace, and uh, baby Liam. Uh, this photo was just taken about two months ago. Uh, we are a very young family, and so this is really, uh, over here is my first vocation, uh, is to be a husband, a father, and to be the first evangelist, to be the first catechist uh, to my kids. But before I was born, my family was going through a lot of financial difficulties especially with two kids already to care for. When I, when I came along uh, accidentally, my mom decided that perhaps it is better that I be aborted uh, because they really couldn't afford uh, to be pregnant with the third kid. So on the way to the abortion, she decided to drop by the OLPS Mary Grotto, uh, kind of to apologize in advance for what she was going to do. Uh, and for some reason that day, Father Michael Aro walked by a uh, MEP priest uh, and he asked, um, for some reason, three times, you know, what was she going to do? My mom eventually broke and she admitted that uh, she was going to go for an abortion and that she really couldn't afford this child, not even the hospital bills, not even the, um, the checkup bills. So, my, my, so Father Aro said to her very clearly that day, if you cannot afford this child, God can. Give him to God uh, and trust in him. And so by those words, uh, that's the story of how an MEP priest uh, essentially saved my life at the Mary Grotto at OLPS. Uh, I grew up in OLPS, art ministry from my dad, altar service since primary two, served in youth ministry and eventually amplified in CSC. It's around that season that I was very interested in leadership and around that time that I think God uh, seeded the spark of my vocation. Uh, one day I was home, a uh, teenager, my dad was beside me watching BBC and um, I was reading a book by John C. Maxwell. And he said in the book, leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. And just as I finished reading that sentence, uh, I happened to just look up on the running words at the bottom of the BBC news. And he read, television is the world's greatest influence on culture today. And I think for some reason, that called out to me. That, that was the moment I started to answer the call towards media evangelization, that if we wanted to influence the world to Christ and his love, then we have to learn how to harness media and the influence and the leadership. And, and, and so that started my journey to be a filmmaker for God. Uh, I went on to study film and TV in uh, Tomasic Poly, and after Tomasic Poly, I entered NS. Uh, there I was trained as an armor tank officer. And, uh, and eventually, towards the last year of uh, NS, I was drafted to be the executive media producer for National Day Parade 09, and eventually contracted to run the media for Singapore Youth Olympic Games uh, ceremonies. Thereafter, with the grace of God, I received a scholarship to study film in Melbourne, and I graduated with 27 uh, International Film Awards for a graduation war film that I made. Now, a month after I returned from Australia, uh, I co-founded a media company called Pixel Musical. And in my five years there, I directed uh, Catholic videos like the SG50 Catholic Light, Catholic Foundation videos, and uh, overseas mission videos for the MCSBA and many others. I also directed commercial works for clients like uh, Kudita, Dilaku, Sam Court Marine, Sati Cisco, and Muji. After five years, I left Pixel Musical and I worked as an adjunct lecturer at Thermastic Polytechnic, teaching uh, cinematography, film genre, and uh, video editing. While doing this, I was also invited by Archcoms as a video consultant to help to set up video capabilities for the Archdiocese. In 2017, I think I joined Archbishop Office full-time, and I set up Arch Productions to serve the video media needs of the Archdiocese. Uh, we encouraged Catholic organizations to use media to advocate their missions for evangelization, and also went to um, go other places like filming in uh, Rohingya for the refugees with the Jesuit Refugee Services. 
Now, in 2019, with the blessing and encouragement of Archbishop William Goh, uh, and in collaboration with the founders of FNA, uh, the Cocoa Trees, I left the Archbishop office to start Semex Private Limited in partnership with Paul and Esther Lu, uh, and my wife. My wife quit her full-time job, uh, full job as an occupational therapist and joined me on the journey, um, which is a very big sacrifice on her part. Uh, with the grace of God, uh, Semex Private Limited officially started in August 2019 the month of the Feast of St. Maximilian Kobe, um, our patron saint. So, um, let me tell you more about St. Max, now that we got through that introduction. Uh, St. Max is an evangelizing enterprise. We are a mission with a business, not a business with a mission. We are a mission first with a business. And our mission is similar to that of St. Maximilian um, Kobe, which is to use uh, media of our time and um, right now our time is film, video, social media. At that point in time, it was magazines during his season uh, to bring the light of Christ to others, understanding that the new shore of evangelization is right now in our time, the internet. And our mission is to bring Jesus to the watchers. No longer will people be readers or listeners, uh, but the current and future generations of our time will learn through watching. And um, so it is our mission to bring Jesus to the watchers, to bring Jesus to them, to bring the gospel. So our work always needs to be consistently life-giving. In the first year of our setup, we have done about 300 videos. That's about one every working day. I hope you don't mind. We put together a short video and we're going to just present it. It's only a short, I think, three minutes. Um, and it will give you a glimpse of some of the work that we have done. That was a Calic show reel. Some of you all might be wondering, um, why did we choose a giraffe for our logo? 
So uh, to be ins inspired by Bishop uh, Kike, who is known as the Bishop of Wheelchairs in Cambodia, firstly, uh, the giraffe is the land animal uh, with the biggest heart in the world because he needs to pump his blood all the way up his long neck. So likewise, the giraffe always reminds us at St. Max that we need to have a big heart. Big heart for God, big heart for his people. Uh, secondly, the giraffe is a leader. So why is giraffe a leader? He's the tallest land animal in the world and being tall, he's able to spot dangers from afar, you know. And from, for other animals, they always look to the giraffe uh, as a guide, you know. If he walks that way, we better follow because, uh, you know, maybe the, the, the lions are coming from the other direction, you know. So likewise, we need to be a company with far-sighted vision. We, we must constantly look to lead others away from danger through media communication. Thirdly, a giraffe is a gentle communicator. You know, when he sees a pride of lion approaching, he doesn't scream or roar, you know, he simply wiggles his ears, you know, turn the other direction, and then he walks away. You know, and all the animals see him walking away, they'll follow, right? So likewise, our stories and media needs to be a gentle form of communication for people to self-subscribe to the truth through their own personal discovery, through their own personal subscription. Lastly, the giraffe needs to always have four legs on the ground. And so it reminds us that it's important that we, uh, as, as lay missionaries, we as uh, Christians, need to be always grounded in humility and prayer. So, Semex is consecrated to Mother Mary. She is the star of the new evangelization, and she is our CEO. Uh, among the company owners, we all have a firm understanding that we merely are stewards of the company. In our company, we start the day every day by praying the rosary as a community before we start work. We pray for the work that we do, we intercede for each other in a community, and even some of us, uh, when we are out on shoot or meetings and we cannot come for the rosary because of the client demands, um, the rest of the team intercede on their behalf. So let me tell you a story of how Mother Mary, all right, prepare our business to help serve the church and its people during a time of an unexpected uh, pandemic when church throughout Singapore and all over the world went into lockdown. Looking back, uh, Semex started just six months before COVID-19 hit Singapore. And it was just enough time for us to, in a way, set up and get everything going. During the six months, uh, we kept feeling when we, was, when we started that we had to prepare for something big. Like a storm was coming and we had to prepare for um, some of a Noah's Ark situation. Uh, and in our discernment, in our prayers, we somehow felt that we need to go into... Um, very strangely, live streaming. Uh, in October 2019, we had a visit from a priest from America who shared with us about their weekly broadcast of the Sunday Mass on TV. Uh, we were inspired that broadcasting Sunday Masses, back then Singapore got nothing, right? We had very little online Mass, only for day obligations, and that one was only 150 views. So we were inspired that broadcasting Sunday Masses was used to minister to the homebound, elderly, new mothers, or those who are sick or with low immunity. So we started realizing, hey, there's a need in the church because we have aging populations. So we started to pitch to the church to start perhaps weekly live stream masters to minister to our aging population or to the sick. At the same time, uh, we also had some capital that came in to invest in equipment. And actually, by right, we had intended to buy some more like uh, cinema great cameras and lenses, which would actually help further our prospects uh, to increase our production value and maybe we can get more commercial jobs. But it was very clear in our prayer and discernment that we needed to buy live stream cameras and equipment instead. And it was very weird because that didn't make sense to us, but the, the prompting kept coming. Uh, but as leaders, we, we trusted Mary's guidance. We, we bought the live stream equipment just in time for Our Lady of Lutz event at the National Stadium. And uh, after the event, the cameras sat in our store. <laughs> Uh, very much unused for some time, which seemed a bit, it was a bit of a mistake, you know, of a bad investment. In January 2020, there was also a strange phenomenon. All right, this is like how it came to be. We suddenly had a lot of young people coming to meet us, saying that they wanted to join Semex to do the mission of media evangelization. Uh, they were interested in, in learning, uh, doing this for many years. I, I really never saw such a sudden influx of interest. So to me, it was a real phenomenon. Um, and we knew there was no way that we could sustain all of them as they came knocking on our doors. Neither did we know that we actually needed every single one of them to be part of the community, to be able to meet the media needs of the church during the unexpected um, pandemic. So 
it was funny. So God sent the people and, and you know, uh, it was such a phenomenon. On Valentine's Day 2020, Archbishop announced that all masses were going to close. Uh, I was at Cathedral at the very last mass and I think no one was prepared for it. Uh, we were one of the first churches then in Singapore to make the decision to stop uh, public worship. And we knew that a lot of the Catholic community um, will be in shock and will be attending mass live stream for the very first time. And if the experience was bad, uh, it would have been potentially be a make or break, you know, for a lot of people's spiritual morale at the point of time. So as media missionaries, like we felt that it was very important that we provide the best alternative with the highest spirit of excellence that we can. So, so that we can allow people to feel like, hey, yeah, actually, okay, like, it's not so bad, you know. Actually, I can still experience God uh, in the online Mass. Uh, in fact, my son sat down with me, you know, during Mass, uh, who have not been to church for many years, you know. So actually, it was a good thing, you know. We wanted to see whether um, online Mass could go further than, than just providing a, a next best alternative. So I called Ashcoms and offered to support their efforts, uh, which they accepted. At that point in time, they were a bit unequipped and they were unprepared actually they were still running down to the chapel trying to set up the live streams um, so Archbishop announced on Friday evening that masses will close and by Saturday morning we were setting up and doing technical testing and we recorded the first online mass that next day one of the most beautiful thing about this whole thing was that the team of young people you know, uh, who worked around the clock, stayed overnight, preparing the slides, editing, designing the spiritual communion videos. All this was possible because actually, if you think about it, Mother Mary spent the last six months preparing us, seeing the need. So during that season, the live stream cameras were used daily. And we felt blessed that we had bought the equipment in advance because uh, like thermal scanners or thermometers, there was a worldwide shortage of live streaming equipment by the time the pandemic hit. We stood in the gap during the time and set a standard uh, for masses during the online masses daily by God's grace and providence. Generous uh, donors and supporters stepped forward and supported us financially during that time and also gave the church the time to respond and set up capabilities in the individual parishes and ministries. Actually, after a week uh, of online mass, we realized that the children were having a particularly hard time connecting with um, um, the online mass. So that led to us seeing the need to organize the online mass with children and young families. And we gathered as uh, collaborators, Mark, Janice, uh, Elf, uh, Angie. This mass gave the children an opportunity to serve and also see other children participating and serving in mass. Um, we collaborated um, with many people uh, and with the grace of God, they all came together. And we, we, we also saw the opportunity to include some action songs and pre-mass catechies before mass to prepare the kids to participate in mass. Mm -hmm. Our aim was to use this opportunity and platform to help children fall in love um, with the Mass again. Uh, or for some of them who, who still are learning, you know, at least they come to love the Mass, especially when they see the close-up shots uh, and learn. We also found that the deaf community could not participate in Mass. And, and there was no subtitles and, uh, for certain parts. And we pushed to introduce the sign language into the live streams so that the deaf were allowed to follow the mass from home in the initial weeks eventually. We taught them how to set up their own uh, OBS and uh, restream the masses with signing translators and they could run it weekly independently themselves. Um, then we went on to devotions like Station of the Cross because we hit Lent, right? And fundraising videos, there was a big need because a lot of people were retrenched and, and the charities were trying to get money uh, to, to, to help uh, the poor. So we did fundraising videos for Caritas, St. Vincent Depot Society, Caris. Uh, Kelly Foundation, RCIA sessions, we did Lenten reflections, uh, discernment series. We did um, in compassion uh, Catholic funerals and formational videos like the Divine Office and the Marian series. Uh, quite a number of these projects were not compensated uh, or not commissioned, official commission. But as an evangelizing enterprise, uh, I think we made the decision to stretch our revenue to support the evangelizing initiatives from other, um, you know, commissions that came in. Uh, one day, Corinne May uh, called and she asked to see if we could provide Eucharistic adoration. You know? So we brought the idea to then Monsignor Philip Hing, who was the rector, and we took the idea to the... And then Monsignor Philip Hing, being very foresighted, he took the idea to the next level and decided that, no, this Eucharistic perpetual adoration could be made into a prayer mission for the whole archdiocese in this season. 
So after a lot of technical testing, we got the setup going and it has now been almost a year since uh, we have started the 24-7 Perpetual Adoration live stream. And it has already garnered about 3.5 million views. 350,000 prayer petitions shared with an average duration of 36 minutes per visitor. Ministering not only to Singapore, but to other countries like America, uh, Brazil, um, India, and other countries. And, that, and, this, and these are the countries that uh, has also been hardest hit by the pandemic. So it's quite interesting, so, right? Because they all come and run towards the Holy Eucharist. Uh, Holy Week was the midst of our circuit breaker. And this made the operation very difficult as we were only allowed two people to run the live streams, uh, Michelle Peng and, and me. So we had to work creatively and had to strap visual mixer on my, on my vest so I could mix the images and the men. Uh, I meant the cameras. I think we meant about eight cameras at one time. And this was so that we could provide the live stream without compromising on the Holy Week uh, liturgy. Uh, we had the whole community supporting and working from their home remotely uh, to make sure that live streams went smoothly. And it was actually a blessing that we were a business because we managed to get essential service clearance for MCCY to be on site. So during Easter, even though we couldn't physically celebrate together as a church, we wanted to also initiate and bring Easter joy and sense of community to everybody, you know. So we initiated a surprise virtual choir of the Easter song together with the cathedral choir, and we played it after the Easter Mass um, to wish everyone a happy Easter. I remember being in the empty cathedral, seeing Bishop clearly move with the tears of joy as he watched the Easter virtual choir. And for me, those, those tears of joy uh, sums up the fruits of what an evangelizing enterprise can do, especially with leaders who are docile to the guidance of Mother Mary and the Holy Spirit. So you see, the wedding at Cana, for me, explains Mother Mary's role in this whole story. So let me explain. And let me, uh, bear with me, let me read to you the Bible passage from the wedding of Cana. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. And when the wine ran short, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what does your concern affect me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. And Jesus told them, Fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. And we all know the story, right? The water turned into wine. And Jesus did his first miracle, triggering him into you know, public ministry. For me, like the wedding couple, we simply invited Mother Mary to be with us on a journey. And even though the wedding couple likely didn't know that they were running short of wine, Mother Mary, in her sensitivity and her compassion to the potential embarrassment, interceded on their behalf to her son Jesus to make a miracle happen. Likewise, I believe that she did the same for us in the Church of Singapore. When some, when, without us even knowing, she already foresaw and provided us the advanced help and guidance that we needed. So a lot of times, we underestimate Mother Mary, you know, and her role in our lives. But, but think about it, okay, think about it. When she turned to the servants and said, do whatever he tells you, not only did those five words move the servants into action, but those five words also triggered Jesus into his public ministry. That, those five words move God himself by performing his first miracle. This is how influential Mother Mary is. So as entrepreneurs, right, it's important for us as business owners to realize that we are simply also the servants who fill the jars with water. It is Jesus who turns it into wine, not us. Okay, we are just the servants that fill the water, right? And, but it's Jesus Right? In all his glory, he's the one that turned the water into wine. And all glory goes to him. So something to note that if you realize that only the servants, right? If you, if you read down the gospel, it says that only the servants saw the full manifestation of Christ. That the servants saw the full miracle and they are the one that experienced the glory of Christ. And that's the exciting thing about being an evangelizing entrepreneur. That there's been so many stories right, in the past year that I cannot share with you today. It's just too much. Just too much miracles, too much 
coincidences, too much like little, small little things that just amazes me every day, you know. And, and it's, it's, it's simply for my heart and, and perhaps the, the Samex team hearts uh, for us to know the glory of God. So it's truly very exciting to be an uh, evangelizing and tribunal for God because you really get to see the, His full manifestation. So how do you invite Mother Mary into your life and business? Here's the answer, all right? If you're not sure, all right, do what we did. Basically, Anne Marie and I, during our darkest time, all we did was that we gathered together after we put the kids to sleep and we prayed the rosary. We just simply prayed the rosary together as a married couple. We prayed it every day, daily. And it might not seem much at first, and I coach you to be patient, but I assure you that Mother Mary will reveal herself to you. And not only will she reveal herself to you, she will also reveal her son. So just simply offer your business or endeavor to her loving guidance and protection. Uh, look to her when making decisions as a leader and let every step you take be the step that God wants you to take. I think that's what very important for an uh, evangelizing entrepreneur. Isn't it true that as entrepreneurs, right, you know, we don't have a manual on how to do things. We are learning on the job, we are figuring out how to code, we are waking up with anxiety, we are not sure whether we can pay our staff on time, we are worried about the next check, whether the client is going to answer back or is going to reject. We are often feeling our way in the dark. So I say to you, if entrepreneur, business owners, let Mother Mary and Jesus be your guiding light, especially if you are one who always have to feel your way in the dark. Let them be your guiding light. If you have a dream of starting a business, if God put in your heart a dream to start a ministry or a community, or you are called to go out into a big endeavor that's bigger than you and you are scared, my advice to you is don't leave Mother Mary behind. Don't leave Mama Mary behind. Go to her first. Ask her for help. Ask her for leadership. Ask her for your wisdom. And I assure you, she will protect you. She will guide you. Like the wedding couple in Kenya, invite Mother Mary to your table. Just invite her to your wedding. She will intercede on your behalf with the love and foresight that only a true mother has. So with that, I conclude my sharing. Thank you. And uh, I will continue to pray for you and your endeavors as an entrepreneur.